healthy so I don't get in the hospital. And I got to pat myself on the back on this one because I, I'm really anal when it comes to taking care of myself. I've only spent three nights in the hospital since 1989. I don't drink much. I eat healthy. I work out and all this. I don't want to be in the hospital and, and really be withering away for months at a time. I want to take care of myself. And there's something that comes up, I need to take care of. And that's what I explained to people with this, with this presentation. Afterwards, this guy in the wheelchair, his name's Matt, comes up to me and says, thanks, really appreciate it. Now maybe people know what I'm going through on a daily basis, because I didn't know how it would be well received. His injury was probably about 10 years ago. And then he sent me this long, wonderfully, wonderful, lovely letter about explaining a lot of things that he deals with on a daily basis and nobody else can really relate. I just threw it all out there. I tell him exactly what's going on with me, and he had a spinal cord injury, and he deals with the same things. So the attitude of the people in that company has changed dramatically because of my presentation. Not about me, but the message itself, and I think that's the most important. And, and to this day, what I do is when I, when I talk to folks, and I started my keynote speak, uh, speaking business, it's all about the why and why you're going to do it. And there's two big reasons why I'm doing it in my life. passion and helping other people out. Because I truly believe that we're on this planet to pay it forward. We really are. And through paying it forward, I was telling you a little bit about my, I mean, you kind of know what a Board of Education member, so I'm not even gonna get into that whole thing. So that was eight years of my life, and I've learned so incredibly much. But I'm also working on the charity side. I've been part of Think First Injury Prevention Foundation for the last 20 years. And I do talk to the high schools and middle schools about making sound choices and and, and, and well thought of decisions to prevent spinal cord and traumatic brain injuries. And talking with those, and I didn't realize this, but the last vocation that I would ever want to do to have on this planet is become a keynote speaker. It freaked me out about talking in front of classes, whether it be 10 people or, or 30 people, and I've talked to groups now that are over 1,000, I don't even think twice about it. It's weird because I look at my hand and it's not even shaking at all right now. It used to be where I was like, I was so paralyzed with fear, I had to sit back down. Now, by the way, my medication helps too, so just wanted to throw that out there. It keeps you stable, it's okay. But that's, you know, and, and with working in that Think First experience has really helped me not to push only the message out there, but really to fully realize what I wanted to do with my life and paying it forward. I did that for 18 years. I all of a sudden I get this epiphany in 2011, thinking to myself, okay, there was a lot of changes that were going on in the mortgage industry. I had to really reevaluate my life. And when that came to that reevaluation, it came to what was my passion in life. And so I envisioned myself as a speaker in front of talking to tens of thousands of students, which I have over the years. How can I monetize that? How can I really follow my fat passion and really make a livelihood on that? And so I had that foundation there, and I started making the building blocks. It took about a year and a half, I call it the embryonic stage. Incorporated in 2011 to December, and it's just been game busters ever since. And it's been a wonderful opportunity. And I talk about different things. In fact, when I talk, the subject I talked about is really not much that I've talked about to you today. This is more of my story and my perspective on when it comes to business and when it comes to accessibility and it comes to relationships and so forth. I usually talk about overcoming fear, fear not, embracing life's journey. Now, this is shameless plug time, by the way. I will let you folks know. Uh, look me on Facebook, Dale J. Spencer, if you're on Facebook. And then my website is dalespencer.com. You can read all about me. Pretty easily uh, na navigatable uh, type of website. And that kind of tells you about not only about me, but the message that I give. It's about overcoming fear. We, we, we fear of failure. We fear success. We fear rejection. We fear if we're going to lose our job. We fear on the social side, rational, irrational fears, zombie apocalypse, vampires, all this kind of stuff. And so I kind of put that in perspective and help businesses, whether it comes to a leadership team or a sales team in that, in that, in that matter. Now, I know I've talked probably a little bit longer than I should have because I know we originally talked 30 minutes and we do Q&A. And I don't know what your folks' schedule is, but I've seriously thrown a lot of information out of your way. So um, the one story I would want to end with before I, I take it all open to any questions. This is a hard, we learn hard lessons in life, and my latest hard lesson is the fact that I live in Bartlett. I don't live in Chicago. I guess everybody was given a notice in Chicago about using their placards, and for those who don't know, is the people that are permanently disabled, they use a placard and they can park on the street for free. Well, I have a handicap license place. I thought that was good enough, and I have that placard. 
Well, I was off a business appointment last week. I get back to my car, I got a ticket. I'm like, is this person blind or what? There's a friggin' person with a wheelchair on my license plate. What is the deal? So I called them up and they were like, oh yeah, you're supposed to show your yellow and gray placard on there. So lesson learned, I got all my documentations, I sent it in there, but it's one of the things that the city does that's a fine job that helps people that have disabilities. So at that point, I'd love to open it with any questions that you must have. Yes? You mentioned the change in technology with your phone. Have there been other changes in technology that have helped things along the way? Uh, the question is about the technology that helped me with my phone and any other changes that has helped me tremendously. GPS is probably a huge thing. That's probably one of the things that really has saved me. I'm decent when it comes to directions, but not that good. So it's nice to have those specific places so I know exactly where to park and get there in ample time and so forth. I would say that's probably the biggest thing. Now, different people with different needs I'm low maintenance. I, my injury is under my hip, so besides the wheelchair that I need to switch out every four years, um, a lot of people need more mechanical issues. Somebody that has quad that has all four of their limbs affected needs a van with the hydraulic system to get into there and so forth. For me, it's just thrown in the back seat. I have a, a, a lever on the bottom left-hand side of the steering wheel. It's hooked up to the steering column, hooked up to the gas and the brake. I pulled on accelerate, pushed towards the engine and brake. It's about 1000 1200 bucks. But when it comes to that type of equipment, the higher your level of injury is, the more issues you have with your body. So that's where technology really comes into place. And so they have adaptive equipment for people that use the phone, the Bluetooth, that have limited hand use too. So I have, and that's another thing I do want to bring up, is relationships. Mike, you and I talked about this at lunch, and I do want to kind of touch on that. Part about getting over myself is the first several years, I seriously didn't want anything to do with other people with disabilities because I still thought at that time it was a temporary situation. If I allied, allied myself with, with other people that had injuries, it would make me feel that this was a permanent injury. I know it's a weird thing to do it, but my mind, again, gave <coughs> weird, the whole thing. But I got over that and I, some of my best friends are actually people in wheelchairs. So I hear about some of the technology issues that they have to go with on a personal basis. So, but it's, it's advancing every month, every, every year. It's been fantastic for people with disabilities. It really has been. Thanks for the question. Anybody else? I have one. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Do uh, you have one? Please. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, Dale, you know, we advise our clients, we advise employers. Is there, is there one or two things that we can do um, to help our clients, help those employees or applicants that have disabilities, be they physical or, or others, or any kind of key, key that's, things? That's that a great do? question, um, and that could be a complicated question, too, because I think it comes back to not just only treating people with respect, no matter if they're disabled or um, African American or you know, any other type of minority, I consider myself a minority. And we're probably one of the largest minorities in the country. There's literally 18% of the people that have some type of disability. And so I think the attitude and behavior and preconceptions of somebody that has a disability, that what they can and can't do, I think that's a huge thing. And I think the physical accessibility in the, the, the places that you're, th if you're thinking of maybe hiring somebody with a disability, those are things that really keep in the back of your mind. Now, when I go to a skyscraper, it doesn't mean every level, every floor is gonna be wheelchair accessible when it comes to a bathroom. So picture this, you have, and this is wild too, and this is one of those things where I have to really worry about the risky behavior, but you know, again, we're human, we gotta go, we gotta go. So you get to the stall, and it cracks me up because there's these two, um, the steel uh, handles. But yet, there's a toilet, no room for the wheelchair. So how do I do this? I get to the stall, I lock my brakes, I get onto the toilet to face this way, push the wheelchair outside the door, close the door without falling on a porcelain ground. Now, by the way, even though I, I can't move, it doesn't mean that these things are not important. I had a buddy of mine, I'm not going to name him by name, but he runs an incredibly successful business. Their annual revenue is $100 million. This guy is so bright. Comes up to me some days like, you know what, Dale, I was wondering, if, you, uh, you know, if you're not using your legs, why don't you just amputate them? I'm like, dude, what? Are you kidding me? He was dead serious. 
I'm thinking this like incredibly successful titan of industry business guy asking me a, a bizarre question. So when you hear stuff from people, again, it's attitude, behaviors, preconceptions. Having those conversa difficult conversations are incredibly important because you don't know what that person's going through. They don't know what you're thinking in your mind. So that communication is incredibly important. Does that, make, does that answer the question a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Anybody else? Well, thank you. And uh, we have a, a gift. We have a check for you. And we also cool. have a gift because this check helps actually subsidize. Because you do a lot of not a lot of pro bonos at the schools. Yes. And we have what do we have in there? Our coffee cup. Coffee cup. Oh, thank you. Post its. All about post its. That's great. Thanks again. So. portion of these go to my to think first, by the way, no matter how, what speaking gig I give, there's a portion of the proceeds that go for that uh, cause, and that's thinkfirst.org. So I just wanted to throw that out there, too. And we're so, going to have lunch with Dale now if anybody wants to join us. I am hungry, so definitely. <laughs> and you know what? Greek Island's good. I used to go there all the time. <laughs>